the word, planting the seed and letting nature do its rest. Because this is about a nature, a natural, a natural expansion to a greater level of consciousness. And we are a part of nature. So as we go through these changes with the sol solar system and the solar flares, and these other energetic changes, realizing that it's not just the planet that's being affected, earthquakes and things like that, it's also man as well as the veil gets thinner and thinner and thinner. So we have this piece of information here. We have another one here, which leads into lots of other interesting areas. 24 multinationals move headquarters to Shanghai. 24 multinational companies have decided to move their regional headquarters to Shanghai, including six Fortune 500 companies such as Vail, Walt Disney, and Kraft Foods. This will push the total number of companies with regional headquarters in Shanghai to nearly 300, nearly 500 in regional uh, research and development centers there. Shanghai has been China's top destination for multinationals. Even during the world economic slump, the city's foreign direct investment still increased. Data shows Shanghai's foreign direct investment has already surpassed more than five billion U.S. dollars in the first half of the year. Now, before we uh, move forward in the rest of the pieces of information, uh, let's briefly talk about uh, the oil spill. Bill, get track number two ready. So, where does the uh, oil go? Where are they taking it? That's what this particular video is about. They're telling you that they have capped the oil spill. They've capped. The problem, what you need to remember, is all the information that indicates that this was an inside job. Goldman shares sold 44% of their shares before this oil spill took place by a couple of weeks. Uh, the head of BP, he sold a third of his shares prior to this taking place. Hal Burton bought Boots and Coots, a company that uh, <laughs> profits off of cleanup oil spills. And there was an explosion that was reported by the Coast Guard uh, the day that it took place, saying there was an explosion. Then later on, there was a spill. Halliburton was involved. The story was retracted due to a, a claim that it was a time stamp error. How convenient for them. And so you need to be aware of all these things. Bill, go ahead and roll it, and we will be back in just a few. Tons of oil each day in Mobile County alone. Once it leaves the beach, where does it go, and how is it disposed of? News 5's Keisha Payton joins us now with the answers. Well, BP has hired hundreds of workers to keep oil off Alabama's coast and remove any that does. Now, we've read your emails wondering how that oil is handled once it's collected. In tonight's Payton report, we found that for Mobile County, the oil is taken to a landfill just a short drive up Highway 43 in Mount Vernon. For weeks, we've been showing you this, oil and tar balls that have washed up on the beaches of Dauphin Island. But where does it go once it's collected? We found our answer in Mount Vernon. This type of waste has been accepted at Chastain Landfill for years. We found that the gooey tar balls that you might have stepped on, or the boom that has soaked up the oil in the waters of Mobile County, are now resting here. On average, 20 tons of the stuff are dumped at Waste Management's landfill every day. We're not bringing in any liquid waste. There are no free liquids that are allowed to be disposed of at Chastain Landfill. It must be solid waste, and this material that we're bringing in from the, from the oil spill is solid waste material. It's hard to tell, but the solid oil waste is mixed in with regular garbage. But don't worry, officials tell us that it is still safe for the environment. These facilities are built with a lot of engineering controls and environmental monitoring controls from liquids collection in the bottom of these cells. Sure, it's safe for the environment. That are constructed within these Go ahead and cells. swim in it. By the time the tar balls and the boom are collected, they're considered non hazardous and are never exposed. The disposal is covered by. Uh, layers of dirt, and then the next day, we're moving on to another spot. This kind of waste has been accepted at the Chastang landfill for years. The Environmental Protection Agency and ADEM have approved the setup. All of it's individually bagged, so it's perfectly fine. Now, there are other landfills in each region that are responsible for collecting and disposing the solid oil waste. There's one in Baldwin County, Florida, and Mississippi. Roseanne. All right. Now, in addition to that, you also have the situation concerned about methane bubbles and several areas where there are uh, massive leakage, and there's debate about how it came to be or what's really going on. Perhaps it's a controlled explosion, release of oil, but now it's getting out of their hands, out of their control, and spilling out of control, potentially. These are the things that are being debated. I'm not telling you exactly what's going on, but where we need to be looking, we need to be very vigilant and very aware, the watchman at the door. So the situation is the methane as well, and also toxic rain. Heavy amounts of Corexit, 9,500. And so we are looking at the food supply, the entire global food supply being affected by this particular event. 
There's going to be a chain reaction. Moving forward, U.S. deploys new submarines as a message to China. This is out of the Vancouver Sun. This is what we're going to be focusing on for the next five minutes. And I alluded to some of this last week, what's been going on. So we, we've got warships going down to Costa Rica to deal with some situation in uh, Nicaragua. We've, we've got a situation going with Iran and the warships that have been sent out there. And Israel permanently doing uh, war games, bombing Israel. And then we have the situation uh, with North Korea and China. No wonder that, no wonder then that as China really expands its high seas fleet and its capacity to project Beijing's power and influence around it, too, has acquired the security of ballistic missiles. Confirmation that the U.S. nuclear-powered aircraft carrier, USS George Washington, will participate has further uh, increased concerns in Northeast Asia and raised alarms over American intentions, not only via North Korea, but China as well. An exact date for the war games has not yet been announced, but it is expected to be formalized no later than when U.S. Secretary of State Hillary Clinton and Secretary of Defense Robert Gates arrive in the South Korean capital in Seoul. On July 21st, for weeks now, leading Chinese foreign ministry and military officials have condemned the U.S.-led naval exercises, branding them as a threat to Chinese national sovereignty and to peace and stability in the region. The drumbeat of confrontation has been steadily increasing in volumes and tempo since the sinking of a South Korean corvette, the Shannon, on March 26th, with the resultant death of 46 crew members. This is what's key. An investigation into the incident was organized by the U.S. and included experts from the U.S., South Korea, Britain, Australia, and Sweden, but not from China or Russia, with both, both of them border the Korean Peninsula. On May 20th, the five-nation team released a report blaming a North Korean torpedo for the sinking of the Shannon. Now, the components that were used to assemble this torpedo were made in Germany. North Korea denied the accusation, and neither North Korea nor China, excluded from the investigation, have concurred with the U.S. accusation. You also have the fact that Kim Jong-il in North Korea was given nuclear warheads on several occasions. It's well documented by not only George W. Bush, but Rumsfeld as well. In 2000, we also saw the Clinton administration aid the North Koreans. A Chinese commentary last week provided more details of a threat that the, a U.S. nuclear aircraft carrier off its shore will pose to the nation and also contain a blunt warning stating, quote, the anxiety on the Chinese side will be huge if an air U.S. aircraft carrier enters the sea connecting the Korean Peninsula and China. It would mean that major cities like Beijing and several others, I can't even pronounce, are within U.S. attack range. At this stage, China may not react. This is the quote from the Chinese uh, commentary. At this stage, China may not react through a show of force to the U.S. fleet cruising into the international waters of the Yellow Sea, but it does not mean the Chinese people will tolerate it. Whatever harm the U.S. military maneuver may inflict upon the mind of the Chinese, the United States will have to pay for it sooner or later. Singapore's Prime Minister Li Hsong Long recently toured the Mountain House Air Force Base in the American state of Idaho where 400 of his country's pilots and other service members and their families are in a station. We're, we're training the Singaporeans, their Air Force, in the Northwest, in Idaho. The Singaporean military personnel will be at the U.S. base for the next 20 years or so. Singaporean troops have also been assigned to NATO in Afghanistan and are facing a long stay there also. Uh, Malaysia and Singapore are currently participating for the very first time in the mammoth U.S.-led Rim of the Pacific War Games in the Pacific, which will continue into the August. So those of you out there that are hearing the fighter jets, the F-15 Eagles that are uh, shooting off and landing uh, every single day throughout the day, beginning uh, at about 8.30 in the morning, but sometimes as early as 5 a.m., this is one of the many reasons why there's a number of war games that are going on concurrent. By the way, we're going to take phone calls right now at 503-288-4442, and we are about 5 to 10 minutes away from the, uh, our UFO investigation of the evening. We're going to show you a number of videos that uh, happen to also take place, of all places, ironically, 